time for football. Time for a hams. The beer refreshing as the land of sky blue waters. Hams beer. The greatest pro football plays of the week. Hi, Jack Brickhouse speaking for the Ham Brewing Company of St. Paul, Minnesota and San Francisco, California. Tonight we'll be reviewing the greatest plays of the week in pro football. All the action shots you will see are hand-picked from films taken on the spot. Plays you football fans will talk about. And Ham's Beer. Refreshing as the land of sky blue waters is mighty glad to bring them to you. So pour yourself a ham and let's get set to enjoy pro football. Here to bring us the action, Jim Leeming. It's kickoff time in Green Bay, Wisconsin, as the 1954 National Football League opener features the hometown Packers against the invading Steelers from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Early in the opening stanza, the Packers' Howie Ferguson from his own 22 swings around and for seven yards to the 29-yard line. Floyd Breezy Reed on a quick opener, then dashes through tackle, keep right on moving, and breezes through the entire Steeler team for a brilliant 69-yard touchdown journey that gives the Packers an early 7-0 lead. After the kickoff, the Steelers storm back. Quarterback Jim Finks warms up his pitching arm by firing complete to Ray Matthews and a first down on the Packer 34-yard line. Keeping his offense in the air, Finks fires another strike. This time to Captain L.B. Nickel for seven yards to the 27. The veteran quarterback's right arm is paying off with big dividends. From the 21, he hits Ray Matthews for six more yards to the Steeler 15. Moments later, Fink strikes it rich as he fires a touchdown pass to Notre Dame's Johnny Latner, and it's the Steelers' seven, Packers' seven at the end of the first quarter. On the third play of the new quarter, the Packers are on the move. Floyd Reed cracks the Steeler line for six yards to Pittsburgh's 48-yard line. From there, Tobin Rope does it all in one pitch as he heaves a long aerial to Bill Houghton, who makes a sensational grab on the two, and it's touchdown Packers. The score now reads Packers 14, Steelers 7. Later, the Packers start another drive, but it falls short, so Fred Cohn toes home a 45-yard field goal to increase Green Bay's advantage to 17-7. Immediately following the kickoff, the Steelers begin to roll. Jim Finks and end George Salima team up for 16 yards to the midfield strike. Finks keeps right on throwing. This time, Johnny Latner's on the receiving end, and the ex-Notre Dame All-American dances down the sideline for 18 yards to the Packer 32. Two plays carry five more yards, then Finks rifles to L.B. Nickel for 18 yards and a first down on the Packer's seven-yard strike. Three plays carry to the two, then on fourth down, Finks completes the march by tossing a touchdown to L.B. Nickel, and the Steelers trail by only three points at the end of the first half. Near the end of the third quarter, the Packers are on the move. Quarterback Tobin Rote gets off a nifty toss to Howie Ferguson that's good for 24 yards and a first down on his own 48-yard line. The drive carries to the 23, but there the Steelers hold. So Fred Cohn boats home his second field goal of the day, and the Packers increase their margin 20 to 14. With less than five minutes remaining in the final quarter, the Steelers are fighting for a score. Jim Finks tosses to L.B. Nickel for nine yards to the Packer 48-yard line. With time running short, the amazing Mr. Finks Rifles a long 37-yard aerial into the arms of Ray Matthews, and it's touchdown Steelers. Score, Packers 20, Steelers 20. 
ball held closes out the thrilling finish by splitting the uprights as the fast finishing Pittsburgh Steelers inaugurate the season by nosing out the Green Bay Packers 21 to 20. This is the land of sky blue waters. Land of towering pines. Cool blue lakes. Sparkling moonlight. A land of real refreshment. Listen. From the land of sky blue waters, waters, from the land of pines, lofty balsams, comes a beer refreshing, hams a beer refreshing. Hams, wonderful hams, now brewed on the coast to bring you refreshing eastern flavor, refreshingly priced. Hams, mmm, hams. Now it's brewed for you, neat western skies. Famous eastern taste, tantalizing. Hands of beer refreshing. The world champion Detroit Lions begin the defense of their National Football League crown at Briggs Stadium before a hometown crowd that numbers in excess of 57,000 fans. Affording the opposition for the Motor City 11 will be the Chicago Bears. It's the Bears with the ball in the opening period. Rookie Chicago quarterback Zeke Bretkowski rifles a bullet pass to John Hoffman. The play covers 53 yards and it's goal to go for the Bears on the Detroit three yard line. When the big lion line braces, the Bears go for a field goal. George Blanda's placement is good. Chicago leads 3 0. Later in the quarter, the Bears are on the prowl again. Bretkowski hoists a hefty heave to Harlan Hill. For rookies, these boys are performing like old pros. The play goes 64 yards for a touchdown, giving the Bears a surprising 10 to nothing advantage. The champion Lions aren't used to such treatment. On the following kickoff, they show that they too mean business. Bill Bowman takes the ball on the goal line, escorted by a pack of Lions. Bowman tears through the Bears on a 100-yard counting canter. Detroit trails now by 10 to 7. Anxious to spring an opening game upset, the Bears take to the air. Bretkowski heaves and then grieves as Bill Stitz intercepts for Detroit and carries to the Chicago 46. Stopped short of a first down, the Detroiters drop Jungle Jim Martin back for a 44-yard field goal attempt. Martin's kick is good. It's a tie game at 10 all. In the second quarter, George Blanda takes over the Chicago signal calling chores. Blanda opens up with a pass to Harlan Hill that gains 39 yards and puts the ball deep in the Lions' den. Harry Jagadi plows across for the score as Chicago again grabs the upper hand by a 17 to 10 count. The Lions launch another come from behind drive that finds Doak Walker porting the pigskin 18 yards to the Chicago 49. Tom Dublinski fires a pass into the left flat that's taken by Jug Gerard and it's goal to go for Detroit. Detroit razzle dazzle clicks for six on a Dublinski to Horschmeyer to Dibble pass play. At the end of the first half, it's a tie game. Detroit Lions 17, Chicago Bears 17. The victory-hungry Bears begin the second half impressively. George Blanda's short pass to Jim Dooley is turned into a long gain as Dooley dashes 42 yards to the Lions 14. Again, the Detroit forward wall holds, but no one can stop Blanda as his field goal gives the Bears the lead once more, 20 to 17. The Lions have been coming back every time, and they begin to do that again as Doak Walker shags Tom Dublinski's pass for a 53-yard advance deep into the lair of the bear. Punchy Horsemeyer is a halfback turned passer today as he fires his second touchdown bomb of the game. This one to Bill Bowman puts the Lions on top, 24 to 20. Another Chicago field goal narrows the Lion lead to one point. But the Detroiters are out to increase their advantage in the final period as Horsemeyer skips 35 yards to the Bears' 38. 
The Lions roar for more, and that's what they get as Tom Dublinsky and Lou Carpenter team up on a 13-yard TD toss that makes it Detroit 31, Chicago 23. Later in the quarter, the Bears are forced to punt. Bretkowski boots. Doak Walker picks up the pigskin on his own 30. The dapper Doker is off to the races on one of his famous scoring scampers. Score now, Lions 41, Bears 23. Late in the game, a desperation pass by Chicago's Zeke Breskowski is picked off by the Lions' Sherwin Gandy and returned deep in the Bear country. Doak Walker caps a great afternoon as he outsprints the Bears to pay dirt as the Lions begin their quest for a third consecutive world championship by downing the Bears 48-23. In another pro thriller, the highly regarded Los Angeles Rams meet the Baltimore Colts in Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. More than 38,000 fans are hardly in their seats when the Rams pull the old sleeper play on the game's first offensive maneuver. Norm Van Brocklin passes to halfback Skeets Quinlan, and Quinlan waltzes down the field and into the end zone on a thrilling 80-yard touchdown play. The Rams add two field goals, and at the end of the first quarter, it's Los Angeles 13, Baltimore nothing. Baltimore starts to roll in the second period. Quarterback Gary Kerkorian passes to Royce Womble for 14 yards to put the leather on the Rams' 27-yard line. The drive comes to a halt when fullback Zolly Toast pass is intercepted by Ram halfback Bill Sherman. Sherman threads his way back to his own 35 before being upended. The Rams move to their 46, then the versatile Skeets Quinlan fires a long aerial that's grabbed by wingman Bob Boyd. The play nets 34 yards to the Baltimore 20. The Rams just won't be stopped as 226-pound Deacon Dan Taller pulls into pay dirt from three yards out for another Ram touchdown. It's now 20 to nothing. Baltimore fails to move, so it's Los Angeles once more on the attack. Quarterback Billy Wade passes to Skeets Quinlan, and the fancy stepping scat back spins his way for 47 yards before being tripped up on the Baltimore 18 by Bob Lieberman. The Rams register once more as quarterback Billy Wade fakes a pass and runs wide for a touchdown from five yards out, and at the end of the first half, it's Rams 27, Colts nothing. In the third period, Norman Van Brocklin takes the controls for the Rams. He pitches a long pass that's complete to Big Bob Boyd, and it's a 27-yard pickup on the Baltimore 40. On the next play, Van Brocklin continues his brilliant passing. He arches a long aerial that's gobbled up by Crazy Legs Hurts for another Ram touchdown, and after three periods, Los Angeles 34, Baltimore nothing. It's Billy Wade's turn to shine for the Rams in the final period. He fakes a pass and then routes for 33 yards around the Colts' left flank before being stopped on the Baltimore 17. The Rams capitalize once more as fullback Tank Younger barrels over the goal for the TD from three yards out to give Los Angeles a 41-0 bulge late in the game. 41 points down, the Colts just refuse to quit. Fullback Johnny Husbar slashes up the middle for 15 yards to the Los Angeles 25. Colt quarterback Fred Ink calls for a pass, but rookie Paul Miller intercepts for Los Angeles, and the Rams stymie the Colt drive. In the waning moments of the game, Fleet Skeets Quinlan puts the Rams on the scoreboard once again as he dances 31 yards for the final Los Angeles touchdown. The Rams thus open the season with a rousing 48 to nothing victory over Baltimore. Coach Joe Steidehar, star-studded Chicago Cardinals, play host to the improved New York Giants. 
the Comiskey Park Pro Battle is off to a rip-roaring start as the Giants passing wizard, Charlie Connerly, steps back on the second play of the ball game and hits in Bob Schnelker for 55 yards and a New York touchdown. In less than a minute, it's the Giants seven, the Cardinals nothing. New York adds a field goal to the scoring column before the Cards' Lamar McCann can get his club moving with a completed pass to Don Crittenden. On fourth down, Crittenden place kicks the pigskin neatly between the uprights, and Chicago's back in the ball game, 10 to 3, as the quarter ends. Near the end of the second period, New York's Frank Gifford makes a desperation catch of Bobby Clatterbuck's pass, and the Giants are in scoring position again. Rookie Clatterbuck makes good with another bullseye to Ken McAfee, and it's New York 17, Chicago 3. With minutes to go before halftime, Steve Romanek adds to the Cardinals' woe by fumbling the ball away to the rampaging Giants. New York wastes no time moving again as Clatterbuck starts where he left off and hits halfback Buford Long on a play that carries the Giants to the Chicago 4. It seems as though it's Clatterbuck against the Cardinals as he sneaks for another giant touchdown and it's New York 24, Chicago 3 at halftime. Early in the second half, the Giants are rolling again with Eddie Price breaking through the middle for 11 yards. Chuck Connerly takes to the air and hits Frank Gifford who scampers 24 yards for another New York first down. It's Connerly again, this time to Ken McAfee as the Giants roll to the Chicago 29. There's no stopping Chuck and Charlie now. His deadly arm pinpoints Gifford again on the Chicago Cardinal 20. This one makes it four straight for Connerly, and it sails into the arms of Don Schnelker and Impader. And now it's New York 31, Chicago 3. The excitement's just started. The giant kickoff is taken on the six by rookie Les Goebel, and the 160-pound halfback from Alfred University breaks up the middle and into the clear with a burst of speed that leaves 11 bewildered New Yorkers behind him. New York adds another field goal, and at the end of three, it's the Giants 34, Chicago 10. Late in the final period, the powerful Giant Express rolls again with a clatterbuck to McAfee pass play that moves the New Yorkers to the Cardinal 46. The Giants show Chicago they can run, too. Herb Johnson finds a hole on the right side of the line and weaves his way to the five-yard line. Buford Long takes a clatterbuck handoff and goes wide to the left. Barely making the corner of the end zone for another giant touchdown and the finishing touch to a disastrous Cardinal afternoon. Giant passing and giant power proved too much for Chicago to handle as New York humbles the Cardinals 41 to 10. Jack Brickhouse again. If someone should ask me right now to describe the flavor of Ham's beer, here's what I'd tell them. Ham's is crisp in flavor, clean cut to the taste, and extra refreshing. But that isn't the whole story. Ham's beer is brewed to capture a flavor as refreshing as the land of sky blue waters. Every glass reminds you of piney breezes coming off a gleaming cool lake. This refreshing eastern flavor from the land of sky blue waters is yours now at a refreshing local price. That's another reason Ham's has caught on with millions of westerners. Mighty fast, too. Next time, try Ham's beer. Enjoy its refreshing Eastern flavor, now at a refreshing local price. At San Francisco, the hometown 49ers, loaded with talent and gunning for a championship, took on the Washington Redskins in their opening game of the season. The Redskins soon discovered that they have traveled a long way for very little as they're forced to punt from their own 21 after receiving the opening kickoff. The prospectors display their punch on their very first play from scrimmage as jet propelled Joe Perry blasts over the middle, cuts to the sideline, and streaks for 51 yards to the Washington 7. 
On third down, Perry finishes the job as he smacks over left guard to deliver a 49er touchdown after less than three minutes of the first quarter. San Francisco six, Washington nothing. The 49ers gain possession on a fumble and immediately prospect for pay dirt. Hurricane U. McElhenney takes Tittle's pass and roars to the Redskin five. Y.A. Tittle totes the ball out to his right, then flips to Billy Wilson in the end zone as the 49ers rack up another quick tally. After the conversion at San Francisco 13, Washington nothing, and that's the way the first quarter ran. Late in the second period, Y.A. Tittle stirs up another scoring sally with a screen pass to Hugh McElhenney, who runs over, around, and through the Redskins for a beautiful 31-yard pickup to the Washington 14. The 49er line opens a hole, and Hurricane U hustles through to make it first down and goal to go from the Redskin 3. Tittle tallies from the one on a quarterback sneak, and now the 49ers lead the Redskins by a comfortable 20 to nothing. Jack Scarbath tries to move the skins through the air, but tosses into trouble as 49er Rex Curry intercepts and gallops down the sideline to break into the Washington wigwam for another San Francisco score, making it 49ers 27, Redskins nothing. The Redskins get up a little steam with 2-2 Charlie Justice supplying the speed and power. Watch him go. The hardest earned 25 yards of the day and too late to do any good as the half runs out with the Redskins still scoreless. In the third quarter, Washington takes advantage of a short punt to get going. Harry Gilmer passes over the middle to ex-Michigan stater Billy Wells, and the skins are on the 49ers 15. Jack Scarbath tries his arm and scores a perfect bullseye to Joe Scudura that tallies a touchdown for the Redskins. Score now, San Francisco 27, Washington 7. Joe the Jet Perry, the pile-driving prospector, shows how he won the league ground-gaining title with a bruising 24-yard cruise to the Washington 31 that puts San Francisco once more on the move. A tittle toss keeps them going as Bill Jessup makes a tremendous diving catch on the Redskin 14-yard line. Jolton Joe Arenas takes the hog hide for a ride with an 11-yard trip on the last play of the third quarter. The 49ers open the fourth period in familiar fashion as Joe Perry crosses to make it San Francisco 34, Washington 7 in this West Coast touchdown parade. Late in the game, Arnie Galiffa, the ex-Army great, gets a chance to shine as he teams with Phil Jessup on a 25-yard 49er advance. John Johnson, rookie 49er halfback, closes out the scoring as he bolts over to make the final tally read, 49ers 41, Washington 7, an impressive beginning for the West Coast team. To help usher in the National Football League's 35th season, the Cleveland Browns, led by their great passing master, Otto Graham, number 14, invade the Quaker City to meet the Philadelphia Eagles at Municipal Stadium. Graham, one of the best passers in the professional ranks, quarterbacked the Browns into the divisional title last year, but today he's up against a much improved Philadelphia squad. The real fireworks don't start until the beginning of the second period when the Eagles start to penetrate the Browns' forward wall in a series of rushes. Jim Farmer makes it to the Cleveland 24. On the next play, Jerry Williams knifes his way through the center for nine yards, and the Eagles are on the 15. In the shadow of the goalposts, quarterback Bobby Thomason attempts to pass for the score. He's rushed on the play and is forced to fade some 15 yards before letting the pigskin fly into the arms of Bobby Walston. The Eagles draw first blood to lead 7-0. About two minutes before halftime, the Eagles, after recovering a Cleveland fumble, fly deeper into Brown territory on a nice pass from Thomason to the driving end, Pete Pihos. From the 30, the team of Thomas and DePijos comes on for an encore and moves the ball to the Cleveland 18. 
Living up to preseason predictions, Philadelphia posts another touchdown as Jerry Williams takes Thompson's toss into the end zone for the score. The half ends with Philadelphia leading Cleveland by 14 to nothing. In the third quarter, Cleveland begins to look like the Browns of old. Otto Graham starts to find the mark. Fred Morrison's the receiver and goes to the Eagle 37 before being knocked out of bounds. Otto the arm and Mr. Morrison seem to make the perfect pair as they team up again to move deeper into the Eagle's nest. Cleveland's flying towards touchdown's door on the expert passing of Otto Graham and this time the fine receiving of Dub Jones. As Graham goes, so go the Browns. The former Northwestern All-American finds the mark in dancing Dante Lavelli. Cleveland hits the scoreboard to trail now by only one touchdown. On the first play after the kickoff, Philadelphia's Adrian Burke is hit hard and fumbles. 250-pound Len Ford barrels through to make the recovery, and Cleveland takes possession on the Eagle 8. The granite-like defensive wall of the Eagles holds the Browns in check but Lou the Toe Rosa makes good on a field goal attempt. The score now stands at 14 to 10, Eagles. Starting out from their own 14, the Eagles quickly move toward midfield on the fine running of fleet-footed halfback, Jerry Williams. The Eagles' air armada strikes deeper into Cleveland country, and it's another first down on the 16 as a result of a Burke to Williams pass. Given good protection by a strong line, Burke has plenty of time to spot Skippy Jen Kennelly in the end zone. Skippy makes a leaping catch and Philadelphia at the end of three quarters of play leads Cleveland 21 to 10. At the onset of the third period, the Eagles start another drive with the combination of Burke to Williams working to perfection. A first down on the Cleveland 40. The Eagles don't let up for a moment as Toy Ledbetter comes right through the middle to pick up 11 yards and another first down. Now watch as Pete Pijos, one of the finest and fightinest ends in professional football, takes an Adrian Burke toss on the 15 for still another Eagle first down. Once more, Burke fades to pass. Pete Pijos is again the receiver and the rugged end wraps up the scoring for the afternoon. Philadelphia, after beating Cleveland 28 to 10, appears to be the team to reckon with in the Eastern Division of the National Football League. From the land of sky blue waters comes refreshment, Ham's Beer, now brewed on the coast with a flavor so refreshing that every minute, day and night, every minute, more and more people up and down the coast make the switch to Ham. From the land of sky blue water, water, from the land of pine lofty balsams, comes a beer refreshing, hams a beer refreshing. Hams, mmm, hams, listen. Say I see you switch to hams beer too. I'd like a carton of hams beer, please. Yes, ma'am. Refreshing Eastern flavor, refreshingly priced. No wonder so many folks are switching to Ham's beer. Crisp, clean cut to the taste. Refreshing as the land of sky blue waters. The Dumont sportscasters have selected the greatest play of the week in pro football. This play occurred at Briggs Stadium in Detroit. The Chicago Bears kick off to the Detroit Lions. Rookie Lion back Bill Bowman grabs the ball on his own goal line. Bowman sets sail for pay dirt 100 yards away. The big lion linemen clear a path for Bowman, and he streaks through a maze of amazed bears. Running with the speed of a frightened fox in a forest fire, Bowman goes 100 yards to score in professional football's greatest play of the week. Next week, we'll bring you from Los Angeles, the Rams against the 49ers. From Chicago, the Eagles against the Cardinals. From Green Bay, the Bears meeting the Packers. From Baltimore, the Giants battling the Colts. And from Pittsburgh, the Redskins against the Steelers. Until then, this is Jim Leeming saying so long.
Rams, needing a victory to remain in contention for the Western Conference title, have their work cut out as they catch the world champion Detroit Lions on the rebound from their first defeat. Nearly 75,000 partisan fans cheer wildly in the opening period as the Rams' Skeet Quinlan scoots 23 yards to the Detroit 39. Ram razzle-dazzle, dazes Detroit. Tank Younger takes the ball and wheels around then for 28 yards to score for Los Angeles. Rams lead, 7-0. Detroit's Bob Horschmeyer packs the pigskin nine yards to the Los Angeles 21 as the Lions counter. The Los Angeles line holds firm from here, but Doak Walker delivers a 33-yard field goal that cuts the Los Angeles lead to 7-3. To A Los Angeles pass, Norman Van Brocklin to Tom Fears, sears the Lions secondary, and the ball's on the Detroit 14. The Rams crank their tank, and Younger powers through the Detroit line for his second touchdown. At the end of the first period, Los Angeles is on top, 14 to 3. In the second quarter, the Rams' Van Brocklin punts from his own end zone. It's a very poor kick which travels only 11 yards, and the Lions take over on the Los Angeles 17. Detroit takes advantage of this opportunity. Bobby Lane rifles a, a strike to Doran Dibble, who dives into pay dirt. Score now, Rams 14, Lions 10. Watch this play closely. Now the Rams have the ball, and now they don't. Leon Hart steals the pigskin from Skeet Quinlan, and the lumbering Lion lineman lopes to a touchdown. This fast turn of event gives Detroit a 17 to 14 halftime margin. Detroit sets out to increase its advantage in the second half. Lane passes to Jim Dorn, who goes out on the Rams 27. Another lane to Dorn toss is good for 11 yards. The Lions are stopped on the Los Angeles 16, but Doak Walker has the answer. The Doker's second field goal boosts Detroit's lead to 20 to 14. A Ram rally gets underway as Skeet Quinlan totes for 10 yards. Norman Van Brocklin, the leading passer in professional football, teams up with Elroy Hirsch on a beautiful 42-yard play that carries to the Detroit four. Dan Taller takes the hog hide on a wide ride to the end of the line. Taller's TD gives the Rams a 21-20 lead going into the final period. Rampaging Rams roll on. Tank Younger does the damage here as he powers to the line 49. A timely toss from Norm Van Brocklin to Big Bob Boyd is good for a 32-yard advance for Los Angeles. Detroit puts a halt to the Ram assault, but Les Richter toes an 11-yard field goal, making a 24-20 Los Angeles leading. Lion halfback Luke Carpenter spearheads a Detroit rally as he races 32 yards to the Los Angeles four-yard line. Hunchy Horsemeyer finds a hole in the Los Angeles line, and over he goes. Detroit comes from behind to win, 27-24, and this victory gives the Lions the undisputed lead in the Western Conference. Paul fans were treated to a parade of upsets as five of the six National League games provided form reversals. Otto Graham and Company were the principal actors in one of them, and Cleveland's Municipal Stadium was the stage as the hometown Browns took on the New York Giants. In the opening period, Cleveland's Otto Graham hits halfback Ray Renfro, and the play nets 14 yards to the Browns 38. It's Otto again on the throw. Prime target this time is end Dow Brewster for 16 yards. With the New York defense looking for another pass, Graham sends fullback Maurice Bassett up the middle for a 15-yard advance. 
Graham fakes a handoff and pitches far downfield, intended for Dante Lavelli. It misses fire, but interference is called on New York's Emlyn Tonnell, and it's first down Browns on the Giants' five. Otto Graham pushes into the snow-laden end zone with a Cleveland touchdown, and the Browns lead seven to nothing. Later in the opening period, New York's Buford Long ignites a giant drive with a 10-yard burst to his own 36. New York fullback Eddie Price breaks over the middle and rambles 47 yards before he's overtaken on the Browns' 17 on a desperation tackle by Warren Long. On the last play of the first quarter, New York's Frank Gifford picks up seven yards on an off-tackle slam. Buford Long keeps the giant drive moving in the second period with a six-yard canter to the Cleveland Five. Jolly Connerly skirts wide for three yards and a New York touchdown. The score is tied at 7-7. New York's Ben Agajanian kicks off, and the Browns' Billy Reynolds gathers it in on the Cleveland three. Behind a wave of blockers, Reynolds dashes up the middle, cuts to the side, and scampers 52 yards before being driven out of bounds on the New York 45. Eagle Eye Otto Graham passes complete to Ray Renfro on a 22-yard maneuver that puts the Browns in business on the Giants' 23. Otto Graham pitches to his favorite receiver, Dante Lavelli, and it's touchdown Cleveland. At halftime, it's Cleveland Browns 14, New York Giants 7. In the third quarter, the Browns get a real break. Frank Gifford fumbles when hitting the line, and Warren Law recovers for the Browns on the New York 25. Cleveland's 230-pound fullback, Maurice Bassett, rolls wide on a 22-yard excursion that comes to a halt on the New York two-yard line. Otto Graham fights into the end zone for his second TD of the day, and the score now reads, Browns 21, Giants 7. New York's Charlie Connerly tries to get a passing attack underway, but alert Ken Cons intercepts and returns the pigskin to the New York 33. A penalty sets the Browns back to the Giants 42, where Otto Graham pitches to Dante Lavelli for 32 yards to the New York 8 as the third period ends. Another penalty shoves the Browns back to the 17, then Lou Groza boots a successful field goal, making it Cleveland 24, New York 7. The Giants swing play clicks as Frank Gifford deposits a pass into the arms of Eddie Price, who gallops all the way for a touchdown on a thrilling 83-yard play. But the Browns defeat New York 24-14 to throw the Eastern Division into a three-way tie for first between New York, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia. The Philadelphia Eagles tied for first place in the Eastern Conference, but showing the effects of a tough campaign, met one of the two Western Conference teams they'll have to face. It was the Green Bay Packers, fresh from two straight wins, and looking for more of the same under the lights at Philadelphia. The Packers elect to receive and promptly set out to make the Eagles grieve as rookie Burl Schweitzer pulls in the ball in the Packer three and heads up field. At the 25, he cuts to the near sideline and gets past Jerry Norton. Norton finally hauls Schweitzer down, but not before he's returned 88 yards to the Eagle nine-yard line. The next nine yards proved to be too tough, and Fred Cohn tries a field goal from a bad angle. His placement is good, and the Packers take a fast three-point lead over the Eagles. Adrian Burke attempts to get the Eagles off the ground with an aerial attack, but his pass is picked off by a Packer back named Bobby Dillon. Dillon dodges and dances for 60 yards as his blockers mow down the Eagles. He doesn't stop till it's touchdown Green Bay, and the up-and-coming Packers take a 10-0 lead over Philadelphia in the first quarter. The Philadelphians fight back in the second period, with Bobby Thomason now in at quarterback. They take to the air again. Jim Palmer makes a boarding house reach to pull in the pass and put the Eagles on the Packer 45. 
From the 26, Thomason steps back to toss another one. Toy Ledbetter races into the clear to gather it in and scamper across the goal line as the Eagles get right back in contention with a big seven points to make it Packers 10, Eagles 7. The Eagles get possession on a punt and Thomason tries again. But this try goes awry when Val Joe Walker intercepts and gallops all the way back to the Philadelphia 25. Green Bay's Tobin Roach spots rookie Max McGee and let's fly. McGee pulls it in and gallops across on a 25-yard touchdown play that puts the Packers out in front of the Eagles, 17-7 at halftime. In the third period, Tobin Roach and Max McGee play an encore for the Philadelphia fans. McGee races to get behind his man while Roach rolls to his right, then hoists a beauty downfield. McGee's there, and it's a Packer tally from 49 yards out to make it Green Bay 23, Philadelphia 7. As the Eagles attempt to strike back, Bobby Thomason snowed under. A Packer comes up with the ball, and Green Bay's once more on the move. Tobin Roach takes the helm, and his first act is to look for Max McGee. Max is available, and Tobin tosses him his third touchdown strike as the Packers take a 30-7 lead over the Eagles. As the fourth period begins, the Packers take advantage of an Eagle fumble and an interference penalty to strike again on a quarterback sneak from two yards out to boost the tally to a humiliating 37-7 count over the once-defeated Eagles. Philadelphia makes a belated thrust into Packer territory as Thomason fires to Jerry Williams on the Green Bay 26. Thomason keeps the Eagles on the wing with a pass into the flat to Toy Ledbetter. Toy turns in a sparkling run to bring the Philadelphians to the Packer 13. Fullback Jim Palmer polishes off the drive to make the final score read. Packers 37, Eagles 14. But the Packers notch their third straight win and keep the Eagles in a tie with the Steelers and the Giants for first place in the Eastern Conference. The rough, tough Pittsburgh Steelers locked in a tie with New York for first place in the Eastern Conference roll into Comiskey Park looking for a handy victory over the winless Chicago Cardinals. A victory which could give them the undisputed conference lead. But the motto in Chicago is... Don't deal out the cards. They have something entirely different in mind. The first break of the game goes in favor of the Steelers. Pat Brady gets off a booming punt from his own 35. Chicago's Les Goble fumbles the ball. George Hughes recovers. And Pittsburgh's in possession on the Cardinal 15. Quarterback Jim Fink steps back and completes a pass to L.B. Nickel for the remaining yardage. It's touchdown Steelers. It looks like Pittsburgh's on the way to a win as the Steelers post a fast seven points. Little do the Steelers and the fans realize that the complexion of the game will be completely changed on the next play. Ollie Matson gathers in the kickoff on his own nine. The interference forms. Matson runs right up the middle, gets some beautiful downfield blocking, and the ground really moves under his flying feet to put Chicago in the scoring column. Matson's 91-yard run boosts the Chicago Cardinals into a 7-7 tie with Pittsburgh that remains intact through to the third period. In the third quarter, the Chicago Cardinals begin another march. Paul Barry gallops to the Chicago 44. Chicago moves into Steeler territory. A McCann to Ladd pass racks up a first down on the Pittsburgh 18. The stubborn Steelers brace, but Summerall's field goal attempt is good, and Chicago takes the lead over Pittsburgh at 10 to 7. Here goes almost a carbon copy of the play that led to a Pittsburgh score, only the tables are turned. Chicago's trolley trippy boots. Lynn Shadnoy bobbles the ball. Leo Sanford recovers, and it's the Cardinals in charge on the Steeler 28. As the fourth quarter begins, the Cardinals keep moving. Lamar McCann pitches a perfect pass to Don Stonecipher, who's rolled out of bounds on the Pittsburgh 18.
McCann again back to throw. Picks out Ollie Matson, and his choice is perfect as Matson crosses into the end zone for the tally that puts Chicago ahead 17 to 7 over the favorite Steeler. Pittsburgh starts to move goalward from its own 11. A Finks to Salima completion is good for a first down on the 25. A win here could put Pittsburgh on top of the Eastern Conference, but time is short. Finks fires for distance. Matthews hauls it in and bulls his way to the Chicago 27. <laughs> Moving right on downfield, L.B. Nickel is upended, but not before he pulls in Finks' pass on the Cardinals 17. The Steelers advance to the one. Johnny Lattner gets the honors and crosses for a Pittsburgh touchdown. But the clock counts the Steelers out as the Cardinals post a 17 to 14 upset victory and the Eastern Conference is again in a three-way tie. At Griffith Stadium in the nation's capital, the Washington Redskins looking for their first victory meet the Baltimore Colts. The Redskins are out to prove the adage that in professional football there is no underdog. Billy Wells gets a first quarter Washington drive underway with a 19 yard scamper to the Colt 29. Al Doro, former Michigan State All-American, pushes the Redskins closer to pay dirt with an 11 yard pitch to John Carson on the Baltimore five and the hometowners are hollering for a touchdown. A touchdown they get. Dale Atkinson pushes over from the one and it's Washington seven Baltimore nothing as the first quarter ends. The thrills are just starting. Early in the second period, Washington's Darrow steps back and hits halfback Billy Wells along the sideline. The fleet-footed Redskins scampers to the Baltimore three before he's hit and hit hard. A personal foul nullifies the play, and Washington elects to attempt the field goal. Rookie Vic Janowicz has his kick blocked. Redskin fullback Bob Goode picks up the fake skin and weaves his way in and out of Baltimore arms to the Colts 17 yard line. The skins drive on. Al Darrow throws. U Taylor receives and Washington rolls to the six. Dale Atkinson gets the touchdown call again and the Redskin Warrior leaps into the end zone. Now it's Washington 14, Baltimore nothing. Later in the second period, Baltimore comes to life with a pass from Gary Krikorian to Dan Edwards, who's thrown head over heels on the Redskin 37. Royce Womble keeps the Colts drive alive with a 14-yard dash to the Washington 9. Tiny but tricky, Buddy Young finishes the drive by streaking into the end zone for the touchdown that puts Baltimore back in the ball game at 14 to 7. With just minutes remaining in the half, Baltimore's Cotton Davidson has his pass intercepted by Washington's Dick Alban. Alban heads for the sideline, sees Madison Nutter coming, and steps out of bounds quickly. Michigan State's gift to the Redskins clicks again as master passer Al Doro tosses to the fancy footed Billy Well. Now watch this boy go. It's a sensational Washington touchdown. The Redskins lead Baltimore 21 to 7 as the first half ends. The Colts won't be counted out. Gregorian flips to Lloyd Coulterion, who's hit hard on the Redskins 17. Trying desperately to get back in the ball game, Gregorian throws long, and it's complete to Dan Edwards for a Baltimore touchdown. The third quarter ends, and the Colts trail 21 to 14. The fourth quarter starts with the Redskins on the war path. Billy Wells takes an Aldoro pass and runs head on into the Colts' Ken Jackson on the Baltimore 43. It looks like it's Darrow's day as the Redskin quarterback completes another to end Ed Barker on the 10. When the Redskin drive is halted, a field goal by rookie Vic Janowitz gives Washington a 24 to 14 lead. Later in the period, Kerkorian keeps Baltimore's hopes alive with a pass to Royce Womble that moves the Colts to the Redskin 16 yard line. 
Gregorian throws again, but his pass is almost intercepted by Redskin George Russo, who drops the ball and gets slightly annoyed. Buddy Young takes a pass in the flat and carries Baltimore to the two-yard line. Zolly Toth smashes over from the two, and it's a touchdown for the Colts. Time runs out on Baltimore, and the Redskins put together their first victory, 24-21 over the Colts. The finale of Pro Football's Upset Parade featured the 49ers of San Francisco, defending their first place spot in the Western Conference. The 49ers figure Chicago's young Bears to be a juicy morsel to add to their undefeated string. The Bears are not about to hold still for anything of the kind. Partisan 49er fans rock Kizar Stadium as Y.A. Tittle takes advantage of a bear fumble by launching a long pass to Billy Wilson. Wilson wheels into the end zone and the prospectors open a 7-0 margin. The Bears begin to rewrite the script that had been prepared by the nation's sports experts. George Blanda and rookie Harlan Hill get together on a perfect pass play for 47 yards and a touchdown as the Bears squared off at 7-7 still in the first quarter. San Francisco opens up the second quarter in slam-bang style. John Henry Johnson, the prospector's prized rookie, pounds through the Bears on a jolting journey that ends in the end zone to put the 49ers once more in the lead at 14-7 over Chicago. George Blanda, the Bears' air arm, cocks that arm and passes downfield. But there's no bear at the other end. It's 49er Al Carapella making a nifty interception and adding a 27-yard run back as San Francisco takes over. The 49ers look more like the Western Conference leaders as they send Hugh McElhenney crashing over the middle on a 16-yard touchdown gallop that vaults the prospectors into a 21-7 halftime lead. In the third quarter, with the 49ers on the move, a tittle toss bounces out of Billy Wilson's arms and into the hands of S.J. Whitman. Whitman returns 27 yards, and a piling-on penalty puts the Bears on the 49ers' 48. Burley John Hoffman takes a handoff and turns right end on a sweep that puts Chicago on the San Francisco 20. George Blanda moves the Bears through the air. He hurls for the jackpot. It's Harlan Hill holding it in for his second touchdown as the Bears chew away at that 49er lead. Score now, 49ers 21, Bears 14. The Bears open the wild fourth quarter by making it 21-17 on a bland field goal, and the 49ers set out to do something about that with a towering Tittle to McElhenney pass that puts the prospectors on the Chicago 24. Tittle keeps the prospectors on the trail with an over-the-middle pass to Billy Wilson on the eight-yard line. The Bears untrack the 49er attack, but Gordy Saltaw's talented toe increases the San Francisco lead as his field goal makes it 24-17-49er. The Bears battle back with plan to firing the furnace. He hoists a high one downfield. Jim Dooley makes a beautiful catch, and the Bears are on the 49er 15. If it's a touchdown you want, just hook up with Harlan Hill. Blanda does just that. Hill hustles the cross the, for his third six-pointer, and the favorite 49ers find themselves in a 24-24 tie with Chicago. The game's almost over, but don't leave your seats. The prospectors pass their way back upfield in one big bite as Y.A. Tittle picks out Pete Chevarin and fires a 42-yard strike. The woods are full of bears as Tittle goes back to try another pass. But Y.A. gets away long enough to toss a short one to Joe Purry, who pile drives to the Bear 17. Gordy Saltaw sets toe to ball, and with just 36 seconds left to play, the 49ers get back into the lead at 27 to 24 over the Chicago Bears. But the Blazing Bears don't even need all of that 36 seconds. On the first play after the kickoff, Ed Brown looks downfield and spots Harlan Hill. That's the story as Hill gathers in Brown's pass and hustles over the goal line on a 66-yard scoring play. The Chicago Bears stunned the San Francisco 49ers by upsetting them 31-27. Sports experts has selected the play of the week from the thrilling Bears 49er game. 
With 26 seconds to play, Chicago's Ed Brown takes a pitch out and whips a tremendous pass to Harlan Hill, who grabs the ball in the dead run and races across with his fourth touchdown of the game. This play set the 49ers down to defeat for the first time this year. This is Jim Leeming saying so long for now. I'll be back next week, same time, same channel, with the greatest pro football plays of the week as the Detroit Lions visit Baltimore for a Saturday night game. The Cardinals meet the Eagles in Philadelphia. The Packers take on the Bears in Chicago. The Giants challenge the Steelers in Pittsburgh. The Redskins go against the Browns at Cleveland. And in what should prove to be a real battle, the 49ers entertain the Rams in San Francisco.